Hello, hello, I'm Raido Host again, and in this brief video, we take a first look into AutoCAD Civil 3D module called Autodesk Revand Flood Analysis. Once installed, you find all its tools from the ribbon tab called River. And in this video, we use AutoCAD Civil 3D 2017. Pay attention to that this module was available in previous versions. Right now, you see the final finished project in where we present a flood map on top of our Civil 3D surface model. And in this video, we do a step-by-step -step tutorial how to get here or how to run your first HECRAS simulation inside AutoCAD Civil 3D. Before we start, it's maybe be good to say something about this module in general. Autodesk River and Flood Analysis module enables users to carry out HECRAS calculations and modeling to analyze the hydraulics of water flow through natural rivers and other channels. You can do that directly within in AutoCAD Civil 3D model. Using this module, you are able to create HECRAS cross-section cuttings much easier and there are even some automated workflows that we can use and see in this video. You can carry out water surface analysis, flood plain mappings that are FEMA approved, and other related tasks, including HECRAS ready model and reports. You are able to make sophisticated breach and curvet analysis and automate the process designing and analyzing roadway crossings. By saying that, we now start from scratch, meaning that to carry out flood analysis, we do need to have some base data, including riverbed. I'm using InfraWorks 360 for that to generate that base data. Please do understand that depending on project stage, you may need to have some more exact data, but the workflow is the same. So nothing to worry about if you want to learn how to set up your first HECRAS model inside AutoCAD Civil 3D. If you are new to HECRAS model, then it's good to start from US Army Corps engineers website because there is also a free download. HECRAS is a free Free software package that can be used to create the same analysis as we see in AutoCAD Civil 3D because AutoCAD Civil 3D is using the same software but inside AutoCAD Civil 3D user interface. If you want to test it only inside AutoCAD Civil 3D, you don't have to download HECRAS software itself. It is just enough to have AutoCAD Civil 3D with that module. But if you are willing to export your model from AutoCAD Civil 3D into HECRAS format and you want to carry out some more analysis inside HECRAS product itself then you can do it and of course then you need to download it separately we will have a brief look how we can do that as i mentioned we need some base data or surface data inside autocad civil 3d to start our flood analysis I use InfraWorks 360 and I already have a project to where I want to concentrate. In here we see a river flowing from the right to the left to the sea obviously and city area at both sides of the river. So our main idea in this video is to analyze what could be a flooding area within different river flow rates because flooding may occur due to raise of seawater level. In this video we only look at the river flow rate. It may due to snow melting or because some other factors. I will zoom a little bit and I'm concentrating to the full area of the river and if I'm satisfied enough I can do a export to IMX file so that I can take that information into AutoCAD Civil 3D. My main interests are of course river centerline and surface model. I have carried out this export already. It is quite an easy step. Step. So I minimize my InfraWorks 360 window and close my finished project. It is an empty Civil 3D drawing to where I'm starting to import my InfraWorks 360 model. For that I go to Insert tab and InfraWorks 360 open InfraWorks 360 model. I do navigate to the location from where I can find my IMX file. It's here and I just hit open. Because this IMX file may include several information from InfraWorks like road center lines and so on and I don't don't want everything to be imported into AutoCAD Civil 3D. I can select about what 
I'm interested right now. So I select design objects and refine selection set. I do want to have existing ground surface. I scroll down a little bit. I don't want to have design roads or let's say road center lines, no intersections or no roundabouts, but I definitely want to have river center lines. My main river is this one. Include other river center lines. Include bridges. It is not important at this time. I hit OK and now I open my model. In a short time we can see our model inside AutoCAD Civil 3D. I zoom in a little bit and I can see my river center line and surface data. It's a thin surface and called as we selected it existing ground. Let's have a quick look to our preliminary data and as I mentioned before for more exact studies you may need to have more exact uh, data but the workflow is same. You have a surface model and now you start to create a HECRAS model on top of it. If I do a quick profile using a color line and I just uh, go over my river then to analyze and quick profile I select my color line I want to use my existing crown data. I hit OK and just uh, include it here. I can basically see that uh, I do have some riverbed and I assume that it's my true riverbed. It is probably not as exact as it should be, but uh, let's pretend that um, our data is exact and we can continue with our flood analysis. I will zoom back to my surface area and I will start to limit my area of interest. Basically the main city area is located here and on the top side. I will use my river alignment during analysis or let's say to create cross sections for my river. But I don't want to have it uh, in full length. For example for me it's not so important from here to the right. I just trim it out. At the moment I will keep this line here because I want to see my analysis come up to the shoreline. This line is actually not needed because this is a different river and this is a smaller stream. So we are not paying attention to those right now. If I select my surface and do a right click and then object viewer I can see that I do have a surface data and I can easily follow that I do have some River bed inside it. So that is the first step that you need to have. You need to have a surface data. It can be existing or proposed situation. It doesn't really matter. But from this step we now move on. I close object view. Basically I'm interested about left and right bank lines that are used as boundaries from where my manning coefficient is changing. I can do that by extracting contours from my surface model but first I need to ensure that my contour lines are shown. I can easily check also I can see it already but I can easily recheck if I right click I pick a surface properties and now surface style I will edit it and if I go to display tab I can see major and minor contour lines. Those are available for me right now, so this is now OK. I hit console and console from here. If I select my surface, I can then go to my ribbon, tin surface and surface name. And from here on the surface tools, I can find command extract from surface. I hit this tool and picking extract objects. I want to extract major and minor contour lines and simply selecting all. I hit OK. By doing this, if I select my selection cycling to be on and click on some line again, I can see that now I'm able to pick my polo line or my thin surface. But I do need to do some editing with those polo lines, meaning that in some places I do need to join it with the following polo line so that I can get just one left and right river bank lines. Again, I assume that um, those lines that we have in here are true river bank lines. If you are using more exact data or you are using, for example, some GIS service, then you can create those lines 
manually by following a satellite image. I can easily draw a boundary, let's say approximately to here, and then I use a break command and just break it up so that I have different follow lines at left and at right hand side. Do the same in here. Don't have to be exact, you can change or move that vertex later on. And if I don't need it, I will delete this line. I still have my surface valid, so nothing to worry about if you delete that line. Maybe it's easier if you are so-called digitizing riverbank lines that you use some other color value. For example, I use red here, maybe red in here. And now it's easier for me to see uh, where I should continue my line or connect to another line so that I can get a one long polo line from start to finish. For example, in here, I do a change, I remove this vertex, I slightly move it away, and then I reconnect it. I change the color here, and I will definitely like to break it apart. So I use some polar line again, maybe around here. Using break command, I break it, and this one, I will break it. I don't need this line anymore, and I'll select this polar line, and using pi layer color again. Now I need to connect connect those two polo lines and I can use polo line edit PE command select one you want to join yes select the other and you should now have one polo line from start to finish that represent the river right bank line I do a similar editing with my left hand river bank line so in here I need to break it again I need to break this one and use some different color again so that can be easily selected I connect those polo lines together and use a join command to join into one polo line. PE command again and select two other polo lines. Hit enter. And to be sure, just select it again and let's see if we have one continuous polo line on the left hand side. This is not a needed step if you want to manually create those river cross sections. But because inside AutoCAD Civil 3D we have automated tools, then this step will save our time later on. Some changes with my river centerline because right now I can clearly see that uh, it may not follow the real centerline and I do that by adding or removing vertexes. For example, maybe I want to add one more vertex here and then I'm able to shift it a little bit to the middle and in that way I do some more editing so if some more vertex is needed I will add it as long as I'm reaching from one end to the other okay maybe also one more here and maybe also one more here I turn off my object snapping okay shift it a little bit to here add vertex okay in here we see two different rivers are connecting with each other so another river is coming into this one I maybe shift it a little bit up also shifting this vertex maybe adding one more to here and some changes close to shoreline I want to ensure that my line endings are at about same level because we are creating cross sections based on 90 degree rule we can imagine approximately to where this line should be placed but those small changes can be made later on if we find out that something doesn't work out okay this is now modified quite well so we can move on and i will save my drawing save I don't need this polo line anymore and we are now ready to continue with river and flood analysis module tools so it means that i go to river tab and i will start to define my river cross sections as you see you have um, different tools available to create your cross sections before i start to create my cross sections i will first define what data should be accounted for in terms of cross sections and as i showed you before with this quick profile we were using existing ground surface that is a only surface object in our drawing right now and if i go to create section and select section elevation data source in here i'm seeing elevation layers basically it's possible to use those extracted 3d polylines but be 
because they are aligned exactly with my surface data, I don't want to use those layers at all. So I select all and then hit ignore. Now I go to this elevation surface section, selecting my surface and hit use. Now I have told to my river module that I want to extract elevation data from my existing ground surface model. I hit OK. Now I'm ready to start to create sections and I will use automated section cut tool. It saves a lot of time, but sometimes if you need to place those sections to exact locations, you may need to use some manual tools creating so sections one by one. I select automated section cut and now I can start from left to right. First of all, general river centerline. I will pick my follow line and it's important to select those lines from the downstream end. So I click my centerline. I can then select cross section cutting method. I use perpendicular. I can then select cross section spacing, meaning that how often I would like to generate my cross sections. I will use 100 right now and then I can define my cross section with I will use a default value of 1000 meter and this means now that I get my cross sections from my center line up to 500 meters to each side. I don't want to use cut line right now I'm skipping reference stationing but uh, I want to use bank stations optional so in here I'm now able to select my those red lines that define my left and right bank line. So left bank line, I click pick and selecting my right follow line. Right bank line, I hit pick and selecting my right red follow line. I also want to use those same lines as my overbind flow lengths, but in general, you are able to use some other lines that you can digitize on top of your surface. I can then define my cross section ID labeling, for example, starting cross section ID from 100 and then with an increment 1. That is OK right now, so I hit OK. As you see, those cross sections are now generated, those yellow lines, and those are placed with an increment of 100 meters. Once I do have my my cross sections. I can later on, of course, edit my cross sections. For example, in here, I want to ensure that my river bank line is aligning with my true river bank line. Right now it is not, and it is due to that if I draw my cross section perpendicularly, those two lines are connecting with each other a little bit further away. I can easily edit it. For example, if I select my cross section line, I do a right click, river, and section description. I can see that my right hand side is way far away. So if I click on this um, cell, I can hit this little button and now I'm able to select to where I want to place my intersection point. And I will use point at the same elevation as it is on the left hand side. But you are able to change it later on. So if I hit apply and OK, I'm seeing my cross section view. It's easy enough to go back to your reach extents using those tools on your river tab. So zoom to reach extents. And now I'm seeing that my green line is more exactly following my red lines. In that way, you are able to make changes to all of your section lines. So it's up to you how exactly you would like to follow those lines. Go to the upstream end. I'm OK here, so I don't need to change it. Just a small tip that you are always able to edit your cross sections from a ribbon tab. For example, you can select section description and then you see the same table as before, but uh, you have to select now the exact cross sections that you want to edit. Instead of right clicking it, you are able to select it from this dialog and you your cross-section view is changing. Basically, we want to define those manning coefficients. I hit console and we'll go to input tab, section assign and assign manning's roughness. I hit this tool and then I can include what will be my left overbank roughness, what will be my right overbank roughness, for example, 0 0.05 right overbank roughness, the same, and maybe my channel roughness will be like 0.35. You are able to 
to input those values based on some reference tables. In here you can select three tots and you will see a Mannings table. So from here you are able to see and find out some specific value for your channel or river. I hit close. Once I'm satisfied with those results and want to apply to all my cross sections, I hit OK. My cross section views include those labels, but I go back to my reach extents. Next step will be to define our flows that we may have in our river. I use create reach data and flows tool and I get a simple dialog flows. On the left hand side I can define my profile descriptions, meaning that what scenarios I would like to analyze. For example, I may name my first scenario as a minimum flow, the second one as my average flow and my third one as my maximum flow. On the right hand side I can now define my flow values to set specific scenario. For example, my flow value for minimum flow scenario is as little as 3.5 cubic meters per second. I need to define downstream condition. If I know the exact value, I can input it. But if you don't, you can use some calculations. For example, I use critical depth. I then define my flow rate for average flow scenario and this is 60 cubic meters per second also using critical depth and my maximum flow rate will be 900 cubic meters per second. Those values are usually calculated by stormwater engineer or those values may be measured in the river. We can calculate those maximum flow rates based on some specific storm event that may happen let's say in 10 years or in 50 years time or maybe in 100 years time. So there are several ways how you input those flow values but typically you are interested about extreme conditions. I hit apply and OK and basically I'm now ready to calculate my first flooding model inside AutoCAD Civil 3D. I'm using compute analysis button and if everything is correct I should see a message that uh, my simulation has been finished and I can see that there were three different scenarios that were calculated during my analysis. I hit close and now I'm ready to present my results. First of all, it's possible to show those different water surface levels on your section views, but you have to export those results onto your section views. It's easy to do. I pick section results and add section results. I can then select which results I want to include. I include all three scenarios. I do have a possibility to colorize those different results. For example, if I talk about profile one, I hit options and I can select that this will be a green line. I hit OK. I then select a second profile, again options, and maybe this one is giant as it is. OK. And the third one, options, and this one will be, for example, red. Hit OK. And OK again. Now OK. And if I zoom to my section views, I can select one specific section. Hit OK. You can see your water levels on your section view and I can see some notes down below. If I go back to reach extents then I can show flood mapping and for that I use flood map tool. I click on this and use add flood plane map. I do have quite same options so that I can select which profiles I want to use. I select again all those three scenarios. First one options. I use some hatching and hatch options. Pattern, solid pattern, OK, OK, and my color will be green, OK, and OK in here. My second profile, options, hatch and hatch options. Pattern is already solid, OK, and color will be giant, OK, and my third profile, options, color will be red, OK, OK. Down below, I can select what kind of information I want to show. I will show intersected edge of water right now and flood elevation contours. Later on, we come back and see some other options. I do have options right hand side. Typically I want to include that 
erase previous results if there are any, those will be erased. I will restrict mapping to model results and generating GIS coverages. I can hit options in here to select what kind of data will be included. Right now, console. I include a legend. I select this one and pick the location. Pick and maybe just down here. I now click OK and depending on how many profiles I would like to see or what options I selected, it may take some time to generate our flood plane map. Hit OK. You have now your flood plane mapping and of course because our red area is the um, largest one, it will cover all the other but I'm able to just temporarily hide it away. Right click and isolate and hide selected object. Now I'm able to see other scenarios. So this was an average scenario. If my main interest is to show only the maximum event or the extreme event. I can easily delete all those minimum and average conditions or results using the same tool. I hit flood map again, add flood plane map and now I'm deselecting those profiles 1 and 2. But I do want to make some changes with my profile 3 because as I mentioned before my surface data may not be as exact as I would like meaning that I may have some errors in my elevation and because flood plane maps do depend heavily on our elevations, I can include some uncertainty bands with my flood plane map. If I select my profile 3, I can then activate flood uncertainty band and now hit options. In here, I define my field type again, hatch and hatch options as solid, OK, other or different color, for example, blue. I hit OK and now I'm ready to hit OK to calculate my new results. After calculation I can see again that my red area is due to my flow rate of 900 cubic meters per second. But because I want to see the flood plane map due to errors in my elevation data, I have some blue area, meaning that my flood plane area in general is larger. In that way, we can easily account for uncertainties in our data. From here, I can move on and add some presentation ready satellite images. There are different ways to do it. My geolocation tab and apply my map from here because my model is in correct coordinates. I can easily turn my map on using map Arial or map road and so on options. If I do so, I should be able to see some context in terms of aerial image. From here now, it's reasonable to select your hollow lines that were extracted from your surface and just hide away those layers. Using layer manager, I close my C topo minor and C topo major lines. From here, I can grab this image so that I don't have to be online to show it meaning that I can create easily presentations. But there are different ways to enrich your analysis in terms of context. Depending on services that are available at your location, your image quality may be simply higher. If I go back to geolocation and turn off my aerial image map off, I use command map w space, turning it on and then connecting to data source. Manage data content, connect to data. I I use add WMS connection. I use predefined URL. And default version will be 1.10. I connect to it. No logins are needed. And then I can make it larger a little bit. I use satellite image and add it to my map. I close data connect and task pane. If I zoom in now to the location where my data is situated, I may see that uh, I need to change the draw order so that my analyzed results will be on top of satellite image. I can easily do it at task pane again using draw order selection and just redefining in what order my view is generated. Keeping my satellite image below my map base. I close task pane and as I see my image quality is much higher using WMS service. So you have to test different services that are available at your location. If I zoom in the level of detail is getting higher. My river bank lines can be followed from this WMS service perhaps more exactly. So basically you can digitize your new left and right bank lines 
and do more exact studies. We will finish up our video with some other possibilities from Revand Flood Analysis module in terms of calculation results. If I go back to my river tab, I can see that I do have output section and in here results fewer. From here I can select for example section tables and I do get a summary about my sections in table format. I can do some additional modifications in here including some printouts or saving that data to different formats. I close this table form. I can generate output report and selecting maybe just one profile set extreme condition report options. I hit OK and I do get a simple report that basically looks the same as in HECRES standalone product. I close it and as a last step I can export my model into HECRES standalone. I just save my project once again and I use export HECRES project. I click on it. I choose or pick location to where I want to save my project file using the same name as my DWG. I save it and now I can open up HECRES standalone product. Once again you don't need to have it to work with Civil 3D alone but if you want to do some additional studies in common environment then you can install this standalone product. I can open up in HECRES my exported project. Open. Select the folder from where it can be found. So river demo. I hit OK and for example everything you created in Civil 3D using some automated tools all that data is available in here in HECRES standalone product. If you edit geometric data you see all your cross sections are here. You can edit this cross section and all your data is same as in Civil 3D. So I close my editor and HECRES standalone product. Okay that was it. To give a overview about river and flood analysis module inside AutoCAD Civil 3D and of course if you found this video useful please do subscribe to my channel and you get notification about my new workflow videos. Bye bye!